Hello there, welcome. Today I have a very quite tight Levaya mirror for you. I am sure you'll enjoy it and we will both probably learn quite a bit from this game. Uh, there were quite a bit of mistakes happening here and there and it's still extremely entertaining to watch. So as always, Levias want to start off filling their graveyard. In this case, our opponent gets the chance to play a Talim from Limp, which is quite nice to have at the beginning. And then he also gets an Endless Mount to Grave, which is the first point of getting it into Banish Zone. Um, you really want power cards like that in your Banish Zone to be able to play them with the Blast Mephet consumed later on. But we also have a very nice turn zero here in getting that agility token and some graveyard fill as well. And then our first turn already looks quite amazing. We get to play a 3 card 12 fish effectively here in playing the Mark of the Beast with agility. In closing the combat chain it will banish itself and therefore enabling us to play the Graveling Growl next. This way we get some graveyard fill and yeah, threaten quite some damage. With the smash back we even get to have some agility next turn. Now you might notice that I'm running the Gambler's Gloves and I'm probably making a mistake here because in that matchup the Bonebreaker should be quite a bit better but I've been running the Gambler's Gloves in, in more and more matchups recently and they are doing quite a good job in making you being able to convert larger hands whenever you don't have agility. Uh, obviously, in, in quick matchups like this, you probably don't get enough chances to actually get the value out of them. Now we already already have quite a nice life lead here and draw into one of our power cards, the Blood Rush. Whoever sees a Blood Rush first in this kind of matchup is very hard because the Blood Rush not only enables a power turn and gets rid of the enemy's Scowling Flashback, it also draws you closer to your next Blood Rush fellow which is something you absolutely should consider. Of course, in, in playing a Blood Rush next turn, we can't really convert the agility token, but there's not, not an efficient way to arsenal a Blood Rush here and play something else. So we are going to end up doing this anyways. Now we're sitting very comfortably, even drawing two blues, having a life lead, having the tempo. Our opponent will obviously draw the scrolling flashback here. Now, there's actually a consideration to be made on our part here. We could either go for the play we did, where we're just throwing class, or we're going for the endless more first with the agility token. The thing with that play is, if they which they will do, throw the Scalding Flashback in front of the Endless Maw. We end up only throwing the Endless Maw and being stuck with a blue card to potentially Arsenal. Um, we would threaten 11 damage uh, instead of the 10 we threaten with two claws. But as I said, we will be stuck with a weird Arsenal. And now we are actually only stuck with the Endless Maw, which is quite nice, and still threaten the 10 damage here. Having the opponent Levaya on 19 is also very, very good for us. We will be able to really make them block awkwardly if they want to keep the, the flip an option. And especially with a hand like this, we are looking very good. Now, obviously, the gamblers come in quite huge. Um, and our left lead first as well, because we are actually not um, forced to block. A lot we are actually just able to keep our hand here and play it out the way we want it and the way we want to play it out is playing dread screamer into mandible claw and swing big for that we need to get a second action point with the scab skins and even if we don't we can just throw the endless mon instead of the swing big now we do the same thing to our opponent as they did to us because they have three cards left we they probably will be able to threaten more than 10 damage. But at least they won't be able to threaten 18 plus. So yeah, they get to throw the endless more. 
we get to go down to 14 here, which is kind of scary because they are probably running reckless swing and they have those dominates to um, prevent us from flipping. But as I said, first of all, they need to worry about keeping cards here. Now, there's actually a mistake I'm doing here because I should have rolled the scab skins first to not break the chain. Because with me, with me breaking the chain, they are actually able to use their armor multiple times this turn, which might enable them to keep an extra card in hand. And also make them create an extra my token, which makes our which makes us blocking a lot more awkward. But still talking about the positives, we just threw a four card 17. Which is one of the big big reasons you play Levia, those aggressive way above average turns. Okay, and now he's coming in with 8, not turning off Blood Dead. So he is definitely going to flip, and he definitely therefore needs to use his Carrion Husk in the next turn. And that, even though we made a misplay in our last turn, opens up a way better possibility for us here. If we are just blocking out 9, and in our turn only using the Agile Wind Up to create an Agility Token, we are also flipping and denying, denying him from using his Carrion Husk at all. The other place I'm sort of thinking about here is just saying screw the flip, going for the edge I wind up in this turn and then throwing Graveling and Boneyard, or rather Boneyard and Graveling in that order. But that only makes our hand to, into a 4 card 12, so it's actually not the way you have to go here. Another thing to consider is that both Leviathans only have two Blood Dead cards in their, in their banished zone, so their flip turns won't be insane for long. But yeah, I kind of fancy this play I did here. Really like it. Um, and with them not even having a an agility token, it's even possible that they're not able to convert their full hand, which would just be insane for us. Um, and looking at into our hand, there's a possibility to throw two endless moss here. And discarding Agile Wind Up for the turn after that, which is quite nice and should actually be the play here because it gives us so much tempo. And because Levia is so strong when her opponent is on low HP, because of finishes like the Writhing Beast Talk with Dominate or your Reckless Swing. The other thing you can do here is going for the Savage Feast and creating agility for next turn. Savage Feast does insane numbers. And I actually go for this play, because if you're going for an average hand-by-hand -hand, um, value, we will end up with with a higher with a higher number this way, because we can, we are able to keep the endless moss for a later point. The problem with that line of play, though, is that we drop low, and as I said, dropping low against Leviah is not where you want to be. So the correct play would have actually been to to block with the, at least the savage beast here. Probably the Agile Wind Up as well. And throw double Endless more, making them go low. Very, very low. Or at least not keeping many cards. Now to be fair, this hand is still threatening 15 damage, which, is, which isn't 18, but still a lot. And, and also you will see if that next hand 
was a bit better that game could have actually been a a win for sure so it's not a totally wrong play it's just a little more risky and unfortunately the risk didn't pay off Now they are able to make their one cut nine play with the endless morph from, from the banish zone. And if we had a three block instead of the shadow pit here, we just go three block, three, three block, three block, and then throw our endless moss now. And um, of course we would fall down to, to three HP and blocking seven with the scab skins. Of, oh no, actually two HP, which is the, the critical zone for reckless swing, but they still have to draw it. They still have to draw it. And I've actually made that decision of keeping the Shadow Peats in, in sideboarding, which was a mistake in hindsight. I could have or should have gone for the Command and Conquest there. I tend to board them in in every aggro matchup where having control over your life totals is important. And this one would have been such a matchup. Now we are still dropping down to very low HP, which as I said isn't good against Leviathan, And not, are not able to convert our agility token and only able to throw... Nine. Not even using our plasma fed consumed again. And now, if they have reckless swing or a dominate attack, we are basically done next turn. Still, I took a lot of things out of this game. Um, I just recently made the addition of the Command and Conquest to my sideboard, and finding ways of them being useful is very, very good for me. Still, a win would have been nice, but losing is way more very valuable in this game. You keep learning, and that experience actually pays off huge in Flesh and Blood. So I hope I see you next time, and have a great day.